Welcome to three more must know skills to pass your fundamentals of surveying exam. First of all, I like to thank everybody in the YouTube sphere of making the three skills of the FS my number one YouTube video ever. Thank you. And those three skills are absolutely core learning material for every FS exam. It's awesome. But when you want to go from a big view, say 30,000 feet, and get more specific, you want practical items to learn to get ready for your FS exam, well, let's do those. These are my three specific practical items that you absolutely must know because I can't guarantee what's on the exam, but I can almost guarantee this because they are hot questions from NCWES. The first one is ALTA standards. A-L-T-A, the American Land and Title Association. This is how you do an ALTA survey. There are some things that are required on an ALTA survey, and there are some things that are optional on an ALTA survey. There's also accuracy and precision standards, and there are also items your client must provide you when they do an ALTA survey. So what are those items? Well, first of all, I'm gonna let you know on, on a little trick, and that is there is a reference manual on your exam. You can click the button, pull up the reference manual, and read it. Now, not only can you read the reference manual, you can hit Control F for find, and you can search for that reference manual. So if there's a question that says, cemeteries are located on a property, you are doing an ALTA survey. Should you or must you locate the cemetery? Control F, type in cemetery. It's in table A, which is an optional ALTA list of items. You answer the question, you can, but you're not required to. Free point. The FS reference manual on the exam is a, just a gold mine for free points questions. So you've got to use it. But you should also read the ALTA standards well before you ever go into the exam. Number two, the United States National Map Accuracy Standards. USNMAS, USNMAS, memorize that because there is certain contour requirements both in terms of vertical and horizontal accuracy on paper maps. And the examinee is going to ask you, Given a map where contours are five feet in between, what is the requirement of vertical accuracy? And you'll say it's got to be 90% of the points have to be one half of a contour, which means 90% of the points on this map must be within two and a half feet. Both on the FS and the PS exam, the questions always come up about US NMAS because the examiners are obsessed with paper map standards. And third, and finally, these are water processes. Now, this is a broad category because you've got, you've got the process, avulsion, accretion, reliction, erosion, got to know those four. But you've also got these terms like mean low water, mean high water, thalweg. Gosh, if I can tell you how many thousands of examinees have had to answer a question about a thalweg, go online, T-H-A-L-W-E-G, thalweg. 
burn that sucker into your memory because I don't know what the likelihood is of you getting that, but it is very high. And as they say, sometimes old dogs have a hard time learning new tricks. Well, NCWES does a great job at updating their exams based on current content, but sometimes an old dog can't learn new tricks. So make sure you know about ALTA standards, you understand the map accuracies required by the US NMAS, and finally, know what a Thalweg is and burn that sucker into your memory. And if you've got those three skills, down pat, then you have laid a beautiful foundation to pass your FS exam, and I look forward to you commenting below when you do.